makers and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, embroidery, cooking, whatever my creative focus is that week. My hope with every vlog is to encourage and inspire you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I vlogged. I took a impromptu week off last week. I really needed the weekend to just hermit it up as I like to say and just be completely offline after a very full week and I'm so grateful that I did and it allowed me to kind of experiment a little and do a little short video here on YouTube and I shared it over on Instagram as well so hopefully you saw that it was kind of fun I'm starting to play with like different formats and stuff but all of that to say is I'm here this week I have lots to share with you uh, some knitting, some crochet, some embroidery, broke the embroidery seal, and a few other tidbits that really brought joy and creative energy to my week. So without further ado, if you haven't already, grab your knitting or stitching a lovely beverage and let's catch up. For this week's vlog, I wanted to try a similar but slightly different format in terms of how I share the things that brought me creative joy this week and that it's more of kind of a gratitude list sort of so it'll be a little bit of making a little bit of other things that brought joy that then inspired some making so see where I'm going here I'm just gonna kind of jump into it it's kind of more of a mashup of kind of my making section that I've always had and my lifey kind of chat and because I realize it really ebbs and flows and one influences the other so why not chat about it in that way so to start I wanted to share about like really the big thing that's really got my creative flow going this week and that is my crochet granny stripe blanket uh, details to the video tutorial and all of that jazz is down in the description box below which you can see uh, below this video and I have links to where you can find me on Instagram and Patreon and all those places down there as well but this week so I've picked this blanket up again fairly recently as it's very cold um, at the moment in most places in the northern hemisphere it seems um, and I really wanted to get a whole bunch of yarn together in a magic knot ball. I use the magic knot ball method to join my different colors, the different mini skeins that I've been using in this blanket. Let me show you the blanket before I talk more about kind of what I, what I did this week. So here, if you haven't seen a granny stripe blanket, here is what this looks like. It's just oh so much fun you could do it in any kind of pattern of colors that you want i'm doing kind of a more pastel kind of scrappy crochet blanket granny stripe blanket i'm using a where did my hook go i've already lost the hook here it is i'm using a size 3.25 millimeter a d hook um just because I really like the fabric that I get out of this size of hook. I kind of played quite a bit with the different fabric that would come out of it and I really like this. It's a little bit of a tighter uh, fabric than a lot of folks's um, uh, who I think use e-hooks a lot of the time if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, it's just so much fun. I'm making one for a queen size bed for a topper. Um, so a couple of years ago when I started this I kind of laid it all out I chained I don't even know I think it's on my Ravelry page how much I chained together but now it's growing again and it's so cozy on my lap and I love it so much but as you can see here I you well you can't really see here <laughs> but here is my working yarn right here and I use the magic knot ball method to join my two uh, yarns together once I'm done with one yarn and want to start the next one and what I have been doing just because I've been doing it ad hoc 
uh, off and on over the years is that I would grab a couple of mini skeins from my stash, a lot of which are like in this particular <laughs> bin right here. Um, and it is full to the brim of minis. Um, and just pick like the colors, just kind of pair them together and eyeball it and kind of pick or there might be a set of mini skeins that I wanted to put together, which is kind of what this all was here was like from a particular dyer. And then um, wind up just hand wind because it'll be a mix of like 10 gram or 20 gram mini skeins. Um, I will hand wind it, hand wind them into either each one and then magic knot ball it so it's like two mini skeins together or just one at a time. And then once I'm ready, I'll stop and wind the next one. But I just am in the zone working on this. It's been really great to work on uh, during movie nights, which we're starting to do with my family. Uh, every other Saturday, we're going over and watching a classic movie with my nephew, who's uh, six. I almost said seven because he's getting close to being seven and in several months he'll be seven but so we're he's at an age now where we can watch things like indiana jones and all those kind of fun movies and this is like perfect for that movies that i've seen before and so i can look down a little bit and stop and look up and not worry about like dropping the stitch or anything because with crochet you can pick it up quite easily so it's been wonderful but because of that i was like i need i need a giant knot ball magic knot ball ball of yarn <laughs> so that is exactly what i did this week and it brought me so much joy i on friday so a couple of days ago i picked i want to say it was like five or six skeins of yarn i was gonna do more but they were most of them were all 20 grams there was one little tiny ball that was um like a piece of scrap yarn or maybe it was like something i had knit into something else um that i also used and, and i just spent the day working from my couch because i was very tired at the end of the week and then taking little mind breaks or thinking through strategy and stuff and just manually winding yarn on my lap and and putting it all together and this is the finished product. So I've only crocheted just a little bit from, this is the last uh, mini skein that I put together. I don't know what all of the colorways are. Some of them I do, some of them I don't. But oh, it is so lovely to have this in my bag. I've got it, I've had to move it to a sweater size bag. This is actually one from my shop from a collection several years ago, but it's a wonderful bag for blanket projects along with sweater projects. And then I just got it in there. And then if I ever want to, and because this is quite large, <laughs> it takes up a lot of the bag. Um, and if I want to put, like if I'm going to be traveling um, or on a road trip or something and I'm getting near the end of this magic knot ball, I'll probably put in several other mini skeins to kind of add to the knot ball and kind of continue it on. Although the way that I have it now, I kind of strategically laid them all out so that they were in a particular sequence that I liked. So I probably won't wind any more um, together and create another magic knot ball until I'm close to being done with this one. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how long it takes for me to kind of go through it, considering that I'm crocheting quite a bit on the blanket, but just a lot of fun to play with the colors. I get so much joy. I, I'm sure all of y'all are the same. That's why you're watching a knitting yarny podcast or vlog, but I just love seeing the different colorways and seeing them paired together and having a day where for the majority of the day I was, you know, just had it in my hands and was making with it or preparing it for something to be made was just really grounding. It was really wonderful. The next thing that really brought a lot of joy and still is, I'm looking at it right now and a lot of creative inspiration as well, probably inspired now that I think about it, the need to play with colors was these beautiful flowers that I got. So uh, about a week and a half ago, um, af just after I had finished chatting with you all in the last vlog, I picked up, I think it was, I think uh, I had just picked up a couple of pots of daffodils and tulips that had not yet bloomed for the most part. 
they were at my one of my grocery stores and they were a pretty good price and I thought this is a lovely way to have these spring flowers these first of signs of spring flowers last a long time in my space um, and to keep them alive and um, you know because I commute two or three days two days usually down so I'm not at home but to still have them there and they just would need like filtered sunlight so I knew they would be perfect in front of my little patio window and it's just been so much fun to watch them bloom every day to see them literally move throughout the day to find the sun um, I knew I think I knew this particular well I did it the tulips I wasn't sure what color they would be because they were I knew they would be either pink or red um, and I initially had bought them for my mom and I was going to keep the daffodils because I love daffodils. I love tulips too, but I, there's something about daffodils at the, at the very end of winter into spring that just, I don't know, makes me think of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. Um, but yeah, it's been really fun to see what color the tulips were going to be, how they've been changing color as they've been blooming. They're at the, kind of the final stage of blooming now, so they're a real light pink. Um, and the daffodils are still doing their thing. I think I still have a few more buds um, for them to bloom. Um, but I'm hoping they'll last a little bit longer. I think the tulips are going to you know, not last to too much longer. I need to look online to see if once they're done, they're done, or if I can save the bulbs for the future. I don't know if you all know, let me know in the comments, but I just haven't done my homework yet to find out. But it was nice because I, I miss going to the San Francisco Botanical Garden um, when I lived closer to San Francisco. And I really want to try to make a, a special trip to go down there soon. So I miss seeing everything in bloom. It's magnolia season, although I think a lot of the magnolias probably blew off with all the crazy wind, which I'll get to later. Um, but yeah, so those have been bringing a lot of joy and creative inspiration as well. The next making related thing is in this little bag. And boy, is it little. This is a prototype. <laughs> the prototype the prototype for my needlework pouch that I make in my shop but um but I really love this fabric and you know it it, it fits the project that's inside so you guys I broke the embroidery seal finally after all of these years I've embroidered in the past but it's been a very long time and I've had this project all ready to go. I highlighted it in my whip parade, which I had several weeks ago. Um, and I just am ready to finally do it. <laughs> I'm ready to get it done. I'm gonna see if there's a way I can hang this on the wall, even though I'm not gonna completely finish it on the back here. But this is the frame and the pattern on the top here is by Auburn Hoops. Again, I'll have a link down to it in the description box below in the show notes. Um, I've had this for some time, probably at least three years, um, and I just love it. It's You just embroider in satin stitch uh, as you read something, and it's really how you want to do it. If you just have, like in this case, I just have these kind of three colors that I'm going with. Um, to kind of match the sample, which I'll show you here on the screen from their website. But I am just kind of finishing. I've finished four books now. I'm counting the fourth book as done because I'm probably about an hour away from it being done on Audible. Um, but yeah, I've done four books already this year, which is super cool. And then as I finish a book, I'll embroider in one of them. I am going to at some point go to Joann's or some other shop to find the rest of the DMC floss that um, follow the color palette that's set by the pattern. Um, but yeah, I, I probably will do, I think I'm going to try to get the brown next to do the shelves so then I can have like the shelves done, maybe the legs and the socks done, like all the things that aren't the book. So then I could try to figure out how to hang it up without finishing it, which I said earlier. Um, over in my little nook um, kind of reading area and then take it down and add a book when I finish it so I think it'll take me probably a couple of years 
several years to finish it at this point. Maybe I might get to a point where I start adding magazines to <laughs> to it. But one funny thing, I'm calling it, well, it is funny. So up at the top, I noticed when I did my whip parade when I was editing that I had like a little dark spot up there. Can you see it right there? And I thought it was this little strap that I have um, right now in my little notions thread part of the pouch here. So I've got it here that was tied around the back of the hoop so that you can take it out really easily. I took it off for better or worse because it was getting in the way of me stitching at that part of the bookshelf. So I thought it was just, you know, that coming through in the light um, on the on on the fabric on the front. But no, it's a little tiny stain from something probably from when I moved last year. However, so I was just on Stitch and Chat, which is a weekly Zoom that we have uh, with the Patreon members, and um, Jennifer, genius had the genius idea of just making this book taller and just like stitching over the stain. So I was like, yes, I'm gonna do that. And then the stain is like right on top of the little back of the hoop right here. And I had such a fight <laughs> to get this into the frame um, and get it centered right and everything that I just was like, I'm just gonna live with the stain. And as I was coloring it, I'm following the color palette and the sequence that is part of the sample, as I, I think I said earlier. It's a little yellow thread and it looks like a candle. <laughs> so we're going with it. We're, we're saying that there's a little candle on top of the shelf. Uh, someone said, also said like, make sure that it's a, uh, you know, a fake candle <laughs> so we're gonna go with that so you don't burn down the whole bookshelf but yeah it just was you know I'm excited to be doing another craft to have this going after wanting to start it for so long um, but it's also just a really joyful moment too of when you troubleshoot and you end up coming up with an even more creative and kind of lovely memory too with your friends um, as you were making something. So, so yeah, so that is another little creative, joyful moment from this week. I mentioned earlier that it was very windy in the botanical garden and probably a lot of the recently bloomed magnolias have fallen. Uh, that was this past Tuesday um, and it was so windy. It was the start of the like really super rainy cold front that has come through particularly California because that's what I can speak to. Uh, up here where I live, I live in Sacramento, um, just north of, uh, well, a little bit further north of San Francisco now. And we haven't gotten too much rain. We definitely had also those high winds again on Tuesday this past week, but, um, but it's been raining and flooding and high winds even more so, just like how we had up here in January. It's been like that down south, like in the LA area and everything little weather report <laughs> situation but all of that to say is that there was this really funny moment and joyful moment uh when i didn't realize it was going to be that windy at all i don't think anybody truly did we weren't we were back to california way of not paying attention to the weather report <laughs> and i walked outside i was in the city for work and i walked outside to go on a coffee break with my colleague and <laughs> We, I don't think I've had, I've experienced that strong a wind in a very long time. I think it was almost about 70 miles an hour. We almost fell down and were rolling in front of the opera house. <laughs> um, it was hilarious. I tried to capture it again on film and we were giggling so hard. Um, we walked in, there was like a dust devil, like a little mini twister in the San Francisco Symphony parking lot. We were just like shielding our eyes. It was just so out of the blue and bizarre. And then we've just been freezing cold. There was one day I went to the train, it was 28 degrees. 
I know a lot of folks are all, that's all cold or you're not used to it, but we're not used to it. You know, it's a very weird pattern. But there was just something about that shared, weird, hilarious moment that just has continues to make me smile and giggle that I wanted to share with you all. <laughs> I'm actually going to show you my knitting, give you a brief update on my current knitting project, which is the Falling in Love Cowl, as I'm calling it. It's using a pattern called Tale as Old as Time. Uh, it is a cowl knit in the round using magic. I'm using magic loop uh, using a self-striping skein of yarn called Falling in Love the Colorway by Woolens and Nosh, a collaboration with Denise of uh, Earth Tones Girl. And I have pretty much done the last little bit, which has been adding on this mini skein to the tail end of the cowl in order to make it longer because uh, the self-striping skein was just gonna be too tight around my neck. So I'm pretty happy with the length now. Um, I was gonna stop, but I wanna knit with you all a little bit while I chat with you a little bit more this week. Um, but I definitely don't wanna do too much more on it. This is where I was at last time I chatted with you, so. Over the last couple of I would say I probably stopped, uh, I want to say last weekend, um, because I don't want to cut myself too short with yarn because I need to uh, do a three needle decrease uh, for this end and then graft the two ends together. So I'd rather just have enough yarn for that. But I'm going to knit a little bit more on this while I chat with you. Another thing that has been bringing me lots of joy this week and have gotten into a really nice creative zen flow with it is cutting fabric. So I've been cutting fabric for the next shop update, which I will be announcing the date for that probably next week. I'm still trying to get to a certain point in the process of making the bags to um, announce when they'll be ready to send out and ship to you all once you make your orders. Um, I've been elongating, <laughs> prolonging, I don't know, just making my production time a little bit longer just to account for increased responsibilities that I have at work and just life, you know, um, shifts in uh, rhythm and spending more time with family, all that jazz. But uh, but I do really want to get these bags out to you because they're really very cool and very special. All of that to say is I've been in the cutting zone. I've cut my lining for the most part, my interfacing, and then this weekend I've been doing the fashion fabric, as I like to say, and the linen, some of which I just received this week. So sometimes the long time between updates is because um, it can take a while to get the supplies. But I have been approaching I, I had an aha moment <laughs> this week um, in that I have been trying to project manage and kind of sparse out my making for the shop in one hour, two hour increments before or and or after work some days, um, only maybe a couple of hours on the weekend so that I can have more time with family or date <laughs> or do other things. Um, but it hasn't been happening for a variety of reasons, but mainly because I have consciously or subconsciously been putting it off. And I kind of was like, what is going on here? And what's, what's the reason why? And there was something, oh yeah, my I was talking to my pal Denise the other day and she had just sewn something and she said that she had forgotten how sewing in particular, and I've talked about this in the past too, there's something about it where it's different than knitting, at least for me, where it's kind of similar to taking a nice long drive. You have to be paying attention to the road, to going on and off the gas. There's a lot of mechanical things, just like with a sewing machine. And there is some part of your brain when you get into the rhythm and you do that automatically that you can still think about things, plans, listen to a book, be kind of swept away. You get this peace of mind, but you don't get monkey brain. You don't get, I don't get necessarily, there's no room in what you're doing for emotional judgment or um, 
ang- a lot of anxiety. It's a it's very meditative in that way. You might be thinking about your grocery list, but you're not thinking about okay, I need to leave at this time to go to the grocery store or whatever. And if I do get into that mode, because it creeps in sometimes, then you realize, oh, I can't sew as effectively or whatever, I need to take a step away. So it's set up in a way that um, you can't do the thing if you're in that frame of mind. I hope that makes sense. So having that in mind, (laughs) I decided this weekend to take the opportunity which I really needed to not have monkey brain and uh, be trying to think about how I'm going to do all of the things and I had like organization paralysis like analysis paralysis I get organization paralysis where I just start organizing a lot instead of doing the things that I'm trying to organize doing and I was like I'm not going to say I'm going to do this part of the sewing and I'm going to do this part of the sewing by this day and I'm going to do that. I was like, I'm just going to carve out five hours or more to just going with it and flowing and get into the zone and flow and zen out. I have the opportunity. Taking some steps backward into what I was saying earlier is that I had this aha that I've been procrastinating doing this one hour increment kind of approach because it's not how I like to enjoy the craft of sewing. It's not, it doesn't work that way for me. I need four or more hour segments of time for me to get into that, like that's how I enjoy that craft. Um, So it just was like, okay, that's why it's not working is because that's not joyful making. That doesn't, it doesn't operationally work, (laughs) work that way. So I thought I would share that with you all because I think a lot of us, myself included, as I have been, can be very hard that we're not making a lot or producing a lot at, in a certain increment of time or, you know, and then you start doing the human thing of comparison and all that jazz and just take a step back and, and think about like how that craft for you is always in flow and and how do you approach it like how are you approaching it how are you doing it when it does flow really well and then if you're not flowing in it then it's probably because you're not doing it that way or allowing that mode or kind of space for doing that craft so yeah hopefully that makes sense (laughs) but that was I approached it yesterday and I just was so zenned out by that's like the perfect description I can have it it's like just having a a four-hour yoga session you're physically doing stuff you're in your body especially but um, just real had real peace of mind it was really really lovely I'm gonna do it again today (laughs) Cooking wise, uh, since we visited last, I did try another Paleo Running Mala recipe. <laughs> Total broken record, I know, but you know if it ain't if it ain't broken, it works well. Stick with the recipes. So last, uh, yeah, last week, I made an orange pecan coffee cake. So good. I ate it all throughout the week. It's like my new favorite thing to do. I'm going to be trying out a muffin recipe later today for the week ahead because it's really lovely to take it with me on the train and um, I usually actually save it until I get to the office and then it's like my little treat. You made it to the office (laughs) and I have it my cubicle with my last little bit of coffee or a new fresh cup of tea and it's really really nice to have. So I made this orange pecan coffee cake. I wanted to share it with you all um, and I will leave the link down below. Definitely recommend it. And if this uh, recipe, which I think it will, turns out really good, I will that I'm gonna make later today, I'll share it with you next week. So yeah, so good. The last thing to share with you today is that Stitches West is coming up this week. I am so, excited I'm not nervous at all at this time last year um, when Stitches West was happening really kind of for the first time since the pandemic began um, well we had it we had we had just had it when in 2020 um, before everything shut down so I haven't I haven't been since 2020 
And, but even last year, I was still really nervous thinking about going to it. And since then I've been commuting more. I've been to even a different work conference um, this past summer. So I feel really good. I'm definitely gonna wear a mask and you know, I think I might wear one of the badges I got at the conference that says like, I'm good with the elbow. Like, so if you see me, if you're coming, I'm good with like little elbow things, you know, just gotta stay healthy for myself, but also for my mama who's very susceptible. All of that preface out of the way. I'm really excited to see everybody, uh, to see all of the vendors and all of the gorgeous yarn, and just to experience the yarny culture, our community again in person. And I just, it's interesting. I, I still would say I'm kind of a introvert but something throughout the last couple of years, I feel like I've become more comfortable in myself, more confident, and I'm more extroverted. Um, and I kind of know my boundaries and when to step away. And if I'm getting, you know, I'm over, you know, I have too much stimulation. And, um, but I think because of that, like, I'm really excited about it. Um, yeah, I, I'm really, and plus, it doesn't hurt that it's actually in Sacramento. It's actually just like not even five minutes away from me, <laughs> like pointing to it like y'all can see. So I, I'm i really excited, you know, I'm gonna be working from home once it starts so I can hop over there after work. And um, I am gonna try to go to the preview night to kind of do my, my main shopping, I think, that night. Um, go after work on Friday. I'll be there most of the day, Saturday, I think. Um, and then I might go Sunday for a little bit. I'm kind of like leaving that in case I need some time to like recenter and especially get ready for the week ahead. But if you all are coming to Stitches West um, and you see me, please holler and say hello. Don't be shy. Please come up. I love meeting you all IRL. <laughs> um, I will be vlogging a little bit here and there and we'll be sure to share it with you all next week. So you guys will see some behind the scenes of the event and all of the yarny goodness. And I probably will have a little quasi of a haul. I'm probably, I'm not going to go too crazy, but, um, I, I was joking with some friends today. I was like, place your bets to see if I, if and how many skeins of fingering weight speckled yarn that I come away with. <laughs> because I just, I, I have a need for more in my heart. I just love it so much. Hence, like, it's become, it's everywhere. <laughs> but I love it so much. So I'm excited to see hopefully some pattern samples. I love getting a look at things in real life that you see in magazines like Pom Pom Quarterly or Lina or a variety of different magazines out there. So I'm excited to see some samples. I really want to get some La Bienne Aimé, um yarn. Uh, I think Verve for Keeping Warm will have some there. Uh, I'm excited to see Kelly of the Royal Blue Yarn Company and a whole bunch of yarny friends that I have there. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really, I, I'm ready. I'm really, really excited to see our peeps. Can I say I'm excited one more time? I don't know. <laughs> That's going to do it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this kind of mishmash creative flow list of what has brought me creative joy this week. I'd love to know what brought you joy this week, what you are making down below in the comments. Please do share. I know all of us get a lot of inspiration seeing what everybody is making a la a virtual knitting group or stitching group, if you will. Oh, and a lot of you did reach out to me to ask if I had seen uh, Satsuma Street's latest pattern which is now happening at uh the big needle convention that's happening i believe in tennessee i'll put it up on the screen if i haven't already but when she is back from it it's going up for sale it's easter ornaments y'all with sparkly backing yes i will be getting those <laughs> and i will be i think after starting to work with DMC floss again with this embroidery, I can't wait to start picking up some more ornaments again. It's it's so wonderful to know all of these whips are here. I'm eager to get them out of, they're kind of out of sight, out of mind a little bit too much. So I need to get my kind of candy store shelf 
go in here. But yeah, I can't wait to add to my whip collection <laughs> stitches west and once all of those goodies go on sale that are happening at the stitching thing that i cannot remember <laughs> so with that i hope that you all have a wonderful week ahead uh, i hope to see many of you this coming week at stitches west um and yeah i will talk to you all again very soon bye